I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you second question from a student, Irum. Irum, thanks a lot for sharing all these questions and also subscribing to my videos and making a very useful playlist in your YouTube channel. That really helps me at times. The question here is, a particle Q moves in a straight line so that its displacement S in meters from a fixed point O on the line is given by S equals to 6 T square minus T cube, where T is time in seconds after passing O. So O will be treated as origin in this case, right? So let me again sketch this. We're talking about a straight line. So along the straight line, what you display is the displacement, right? So along this straight line, we are always displaying displacement, S of T, which is given by this equation, right? Now, all the distances are being measured with reference to point O, correct? So that is the scenario. And these are three questions to answer. A, find the velocity and the speed after five seconds. So you need to find the derivative and then you get the velocity. B, distance of Q from O when it is instantaneously at rest after passing through O. So after passing through O, we are looking for the velocity to be equal to zero. That is what it means when I say instantaneously at rest. And C is the total distance traveled in first five seconds, correct? Let's see how to answer them one by one. So to find the velocity, we need to find the derivative. We are given the function S, which is a function of time. So it's a good idea to write this as S of t, 6t square minus t q. So the derivative will give us the velocity. So that is your velocity function. Is it okay? So 12t minus 3t square. Since we want velocity and speed after 5 seconds, so first is, let's find velocity after 5 seconds, means t is 5. So we plug in 12 times 5 minus 3 times 5 square, right? So you can use calculator to find this answer. Uh, okay, if calculator is not allowed, then it's also a simple calculation to do. So not to worry much, right? 3 times, let's say 25, is equal to minus 15. So we get negative 15 meters per second is the answer, right? So that means the particle is moving in, let's say, west direction, right? Towards O, that means this. Now, it says speed after five seconds. So when we say speed, then we really mean that uh, we should drop this uh, direction and we should only look into magnitude, right? So, so the magnitude of of this function, which we could say uh, like this, right? So, so that is the magnitude, which is equals to 15 meters per second. So that becomes the speed, right? So we'll call this as the speed. So that is how you can do part A. Now let's look into part B, uh, which is for us, distance of Q from O when it's instantaneously at rest after passing through O. So that is to say, we have to figure out when is the velocity zero. So let's look into this velocity function once again, which is 12t minus 3t squared. So we could factor 3t, you get 4 minus t, right? So you get 4 minus t. So this will be zero. So v of t, equals to 0 at t equals to 4. So the velocity is 0 at t equals to 4. That is to say that instantaneous velocity is 0 at t equals to 4. We need to find distance of q from o. So let's substitute this value. So we'll write distance at t equals to 4 equals to what? If I substitute 4 here, I get 6 times 4 squared minus 4q, correct? So let's use the calculator again and find the answer. So 6 times 4 squared minus 4q is equal to 
we get 32. So at this time it is 32 meters and since we know that distance is from a fixed point O, right, so we are given here that the distance is from the fixed point O, so the distance of Q from O is 32 meters. We get 32 meters as our answer. Correct? In the first case, velocity equals to minus 15 meters per second and speed is 15 meters per second. Perfect. Now, let's look into part C, which is total distance traveled during the first five seconds. Now, that part is kind of tricky. When we look into total distance traveled, we have to consider turning points, right? So we have to consider turning points and add distances. So let's take it to the next page and see how to solve uh, part C of this question. So let's look into this equation again and see how to calculate distance in first five seconds. So let me rewrite. So we have displacement as 6t squared minus t q. So we know at t equals to 0, it is 0. At, at t equals to 4, we found that this is 6 times 4 squared minus 4q. And that answer just now we calculated came to how much? Let's calculate again. 6 times 4 squared minus 4q is equal to 32. So we got this as, as 32, right? So that is what we had done. We need to find uh, total distance. So what we will do now is we'll find turning points. Now turning points are uh, where velocity is equal to zero. So there is a possible, we'll find possible turning points. Sometimes a particle may just stop and move forward, right? So we are writing possible. Uh, so velocity will be the derivative of displacement, which is equals to 12 t minus uh, 3t square, which gave us 3t was common, and we got 4 minus t. So that gives you that velocity is equal to 0 at t equals to 0 and t equals to 4. So, and what we really found that at 0, the displacement is, is 0. And at 4, the displacement is 32. Now let us find what is the displacement at 5. So we'll calculate s of 5. S of 5 is equal to 6 times 5 square minus 5 cube. And that is equal to, let's calculate, 6 times 5 square minus 5 cube. And that is equal to 25. 25. Now, as you can see, 25 is less than 32, right? So that means what? So let's look into this scenario. Okay, since we have all positive distances, let's say this is point O, and this line basically gives you S displacement from O with time. Okay, so we found that there is a turning point at t equals to 4. So at t equals to 4, we have a turning point, and at 0, the particle was right there. It went ahead, and then at t equals to 4, it turned. Do you see that part? So... So at t equals to 4, displacement s of 4 was equal to 32. So you can think that this point here is at 32. Now we also figured out that at t equals to 5, displacement, displacement is distance from origin, is 25. So this point here is 25. So we need to find total distance. So what is the total distance? So total distance really is going 32 units, right? So it is 32. So you have to calculate 32 plus this distance, right? So how much is this distance? This is 32 minus 25, correct? Which is 32 minus 25. Correct? So that gives you 32 plus 7 or 39 meters. 
Do you understand? So the total distance covered is 39 meters. Correct? It is not 25. 25 is the displacement. And distance is, you need to add absolute values of each displacement. When I say each displacement, it really means that after turning, right, a particle could have turned again, for example. So that is what is key. So absolute value, say. Right? So we just subtracted from 32 to 25. So we are actually taking this as absolute value. If you do 25 minus 32, even then you have to add 7. That's critical to understand. Perfect. So it went up 32 meters and came down 7. So it was only 25 meters away from the starting point. That's how you could see it. So I hope that makes sense. And uh, this is very important to understand as many students at times get confused with it. I hope it's absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And Irum, thanks a lot once again. For the rest of your questions, I'll answer tomorrow. Thank you and all the best.